previously in the last video. Oh no, I summoned evil! No! Bow of the Lord! Bow of the Lord! And now back to the present. Okay, I got some water, let's continue. Keeping us shy, Matthias is quick to follow behind him, making sure to close the door gently as he exits. The silence left in their wake feels almost unbearable. But I suppose it's better than the danger of being throttled. He looked at me like I was some sort of roach. Tino's expression is warm and comforting again. The rage from earlier completely dissipated. It's hard to imagine that it was ever there in the first place. I feel the tension drop from my shoulders hesitantly. Mm, don't worry about them. We found you half dead. Worry about resting for the time being. I'll make sure nobody bothers you. I almost don't want him to go, but I say nothing as Tino leaves the room. The sound of his footsteps grow fainter and fainter. And with it goes what little hope I had. Okay. In his eagerness to defend me, Tino claimed I didn't know what was going on, but the longer I think about it, I can only find one logical conclusion. I'm drunk, no. <laughs> the book, and from what I saw last night, all of it was real. I summoned the demon in my foolishness, and I paid the price. Yeah, that's why you don't read books about demons. <laughs> I take note of the exhaustion seeping through my bones. Tina was right when he said I needed to rest. And though it is the last thing I want to do right now, I painstakingly lower myself onto my side and draw the covers over my stiff form. Ignoring the festering dread in the back of my mind, to the best of my ability, I throw myself into fitful sleep. A few hours later. <laughs> oh, at night time. I'm stirred awake by nothing. I'm quickly survey my surroundings. Something isn't right. It is utterly silent as I squint through sleep blurred eyes. Digital clock sitting beside the bed. It's only the early hours of the morning. I'm about to roll over and try to go back to sleep before. Through my tired gaze, I register a tiny sliver of light passing through the room. It illuminates the room while the door creaks open quietly. Now fully awake, my heart is thrown into overdrive immediately and I snap my eyes shut. This is it, this is it, this is it, I'm going to die. Either Lucas or that damn demon is here, and whichever it is, it's out to get me. The footsteps that I enter the room are light. So light that I can barely hear them, and I struggle to track them as they travel and stop right beside the bed. I wait with bated breath, hoping and wishing that whoever, whatever it is, decides to just leave me alone. I shift in the air, the sound of shallow breaths. Definitely human. I debate on whether I have- It's probably just another one of the guys. I debate on whether I have the upper body strength to fight someone off after all I've been through already. Probably not. Just yeet the chair at them. Oh wait, you don't- Yeet a pot at them. Just grab a pot and then yeet it. It's hard to resist the urge to twitch my fingers and test my mobility. But if I give away the fact that I'm awake, it could cost me my life. Keeping my breathing steady as a dim light shines across my eyelids. My eyelids is even more difficult, but then I hear gasp. A completely unexpected noise and I'm forced to choose. Hmm. Open your eyes or pretend to sleep. I don't know, either way is viable to me. I mean, we're already committing to pretending to sleep. Though I'd rather open my eyes, see what's over there, but you know what? I'm gonna choose this for now. Not daring to do anything but lie still, I wait with bated breath as whoever it is, seemingly satisfied with whatever they had seen, turns and picks their way back to the door as quietly as they came in. The door thuds near, silently closed as they leave, and it takes a while for my heartbeat to stop pounding furiously. That wasn't weird at all. I toss and turn for a few hours after they leave. Hmm. 
and consider locking the door as an extra precaution. But the thought of being trapped in this room is just as bad as any potential outside threats. Okay. So let me see. Page two, I'm going to save here. And then I'm going to return to this point in... Oh. Open my eyes. Despite the risk, I slowly opened my eyes and curiosity pushing me past the point of no return. <laughs> Knew it, it's another guy. I detect the face in the dark and through the meager light of the still open door, I discern the features of none other than Fantasy Boy! Lucas's companion at the bookstore. Ah oh, yes, it is him, Fantasy Boy. <laughs> He's holding his phone like a flashlight, looking at me with wide eyes. This case meets mine, and he immediately begins to panic. I'm so sorry! I didn't mean to wake you up. Tino, Lucas, and Matisse were just going on about somebody new in the house. I heard you almost frozen. He's stumbling over his words left and right, and despite myself, I crack an amused smile. He seems sincere enough. There's no way he's any sort of threat. Not if he's just an innocent teenage boy. It's okay, seriously. No reason to panic. For you. For me, maybe. I don't think I've had a stranger break into my room before. But it's fine. Fantasy boy lets out a relieved sigh. Okay, I definitely recognize this song. Is it from Dova Dash Syndrome? Or wait, from Perry Tune? Fantasy boy lets out a relieved sigh, breath rattling. I fight the urge to grin again. He really is that panicked over waking me up. Yeah, I'm sorry again. I just had to come see if it was really you. I'm a little bit surprised that it is, to be honest. There's a small stretch of silence between us before he points his phone light towards the armchair Tino sat in earlier, whispering a hesitant, May I? And takes a seat once I nod. I'm Emil, by the way. Oh, it's nice to meet you, Emil. I'm Venti Chai Latte. Oh, that is a very strange name. I know. My parents really loved Starbucks. <laughs> he repeats my name under his breath as I give it to him. Venti Chai Latte. And his brow furrows as if he's deeply considering something. Is that the next thing I should order at the coffee house? <laughs> it's nice to meet you, too. I wanted... Do you mind if I ask what exactly happened? Yeah, I kind of mind. Like... Grimace as I recall the altercation from earlier, and Lucas's twitching hands, feeling them ghost around my throat, and at my expression I note the all-familiar, awkward alarm across Emil's face once more. I know Lucas was pissed, but I promise I won't get angry about it. To tell you the truth, I'm not involved with magic like he is, I really just wanted to look at the fantasy books. Ah, he really is a fantasy boy. Anxious as I feel about explaining what happened, I can't help but smile at that last part. Ah, He seems very fond of the books he saw. And anyone who likes my bookstore is someone I have to get along with. It's probably best if he got a gist of what happened. Maybe he'll take my side. Well, you see, what happened? Recounting everything I possibly can from the night prior is way harder than I thought it would be. As vividly as I can feel and see everything, I find it incredibly difficult to find the right words to describe it. Emil, however, remains very patient throughout my little explanation, never interrupting once. He's nodding when I'm finally finished. Brows furrowed. I see. That had to have been scary. But it still doesn't make sense how you got here anyhow. I made a noise of agreement. The two of us just sit in the dark for a while. Neither really feeling like ending the conversation, or lack of one thereof. I don't know how much time has passed before Emil finally shakes his head and slowly gets up, and I tilt my head to look him in the eyes. Thank you for telling me. Oh, keep it between us, promise. And I'm really sorry I woke you up. We should go back to sleep. It's too early to be awake right now. Satisfied with the promise that I would, Emil leaves just as quietly as he came in. I lay back, feeling notably better than I did before. Thank you, Emil. Perhaps I wasn't the best at explaining, just getting out what I could help me. See? Aren't you all glad that I save scummed? <laughs> all 
Early morning sunlight filters through the blinds, and I squint as I open my eyes. I blink a few times and rub my eyes, yawning. My stomach growls. Ugh, it feels like I haven't eaten in days. I wonder just how long I was out. I look over to the little clock on the nightstand beside the bed, which reads 9.05 a.m. On my, by my bedside. Well, at least I got a few more hours of rest, pushing aside all my uncertain thoughts. I focus on the one thing I do know, that I haven't been up for at least a day. My body aches from having laid down for so long. Well, there's only one way to find out if I can get up and move around. With some hesitance, I roll over to the side of the bed. Much to my surprise, I can stand. Granted, my legs are very unsteady and shaky, but I'm able to move around all right. Ooh, some groovy hallway music. Mmm. I gotta say, I really appreciate this background art. Like, it's pretty nice looking, and the perspective seems well done, so... Eee. When I first set foot outside the room, I immediately noticed one thing about the house I'm in. This place is huge! I took a moment to admire the tall ceilings and the magazine-worthy decor and all. There's no way it couldn't be a mansion. And if my senses aren't deceiving me, I'm somewhat close to the kitchen. I can smell some pleasant scents wafting towards me. Although, wait, what direction is it coming from? To the left, to the left, to the right, to I mean, there's only left here. I turn left and begin to walk down a long, twisting hallway. And to my disappointment, the smell begins to fade. I probably went the wrong way. The hallway ends with no shine of the kitchen anymore. Okay, so we're seeing five doors here. So I suppose each of the Nordics live here? Okay, my guess is this might be Denmark's. This is probably Finland's. Might be Emil's. And this might be Norway's. I mean, might be Iceland's, I meant. I don't know, I'm still using their country names. <laughs> Instead, there are five doors along both sides of the hallway, each with a distinct decoration hanging on their surfaces. On the left, there is a door with intricately knotted designs carved into the wood. Door with okay no um wait this could be Sweden's maybe a door with a lovely wreath in the center and the door with the keep out sign on my right a door with a plant hanging hanging from the hook in the top and a door with a live laugh love sign each door looks like they belong to a different person they're probably bedrooms you think maybe I could get some help finding the kitchen which door should I try hmm let me save some. So, I'll go with the plant because that's a door that I have no idea who it I mean, I'm not as confident about who it could be. Cautiously approach and knock. It takes a few seconds. Oh. I soon hear a faint groan while followed by a mattress shifting. I sit back, falling heavily, and hope my knees aren't shaking. Oh, come on! <laughs> okay. Well, I guessed it would be Norway's room, and it was. The door creaks open, and the sight of who's at the doorway nearly makes my legs give out. <laughs> Hi. Been here often? <laughs> it's Lucas! And he doesn't look happy to see me either. So, um, do you know where the kitchen is, my dude? <laughs> like, you know? <laughs> you live here, right? <laughs> He's glaring down at me. Yes. His gaze is sharp enough to cut titanium. I swallow heavily again. What do I say? Mm. Let's see. Well, I don't think he'd be willing to help me unless if I apologize first. Lucas just closes the door in my face. Can't say I'm surprised, however. It kind of hurts. I look down the hallway with a bit of a huff. Should I try someone else's door or should I just try to find my way by myself? Try another door. Uh, well, at least we got that door out of the way. Let's try the live, laugh, love. Because I think that that would be Matthias's room. What about Sweden? Sweden's room or Burwald, which is his usual human name. That might be this one. Upon reaching the door with intricate carvings, I can't help but admire the beautiful artwork. It almost feels wrong to knock on them. Admiring the door top to bottom once more, I raise a hand and knock just a few times before letting my hands drop to the side. Dab. After waiting for a new for a few seconds, I come to the conclusion that the occupant isn't in the room. My gaze trails down the hallway. Hmm. 
Um, okay. Try live, laugh, love door. Or wreath door. Hmm. So we either have Mio, Tino, Matias. Um, Matias or Tino? Hmm. Yeah, try Matias. A knock on the door three times, confident the occupant is awake because of the faint, upbeat music I can hear coming from inside. The door swings wide open within seconds. Yeah, he was behind door number three! <laughs> I step back slightly, looking up at a shock of golden hair I've seen before. Matthias looks momentarily startled to see me, but breaks out into a wide grin regardless. <laughs> okay, I guess that's my name now, Hypothermia. Good morning, Hypothermia! Are you sure you should be up right now? Should I be worried? Is Tino going to have my head for letting you walk? Hypothermia. No, no, I'm fine, I promise. Uh, just lost. I smelled some food but couldn't find the kitchen. Are you busy or... Not at all. Anything for you. Okay, I just met you. Then again, I'm a guest, so... He laughs to himself before pausing the music and shutting the door behind him. And he step aside to let him pass you. Like a guest that nearly died of hypothermia, so of course. You make it all of two steps before he feels the silence. Energy levels high despite it being early. So, hypothermia, any ideas what it is this morning? If it's Lucas's leftovers again, I swear. No idea. And it's venti chai latte, by the way. You're Matthias, right? That same startled look crosses his face. Though he looks somewhat pleased that I know. Yeah, how'd you know? Tino told you? I shake my head. No, Lucas said it yesterday when he was mad at you and at me. Upon hearing my explanation, a bit of sheepish blush dusts his cheeks and he nods. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Then within seconds, he's reverted to his te cheesy, cheery demeanor. Cheesy. <laughs> Ugh, okay, it's too late for me. Thank goodness. So, you needed help finding the kitchen? Uh, yes, please. Alrighty then, follow me. I'll get you there, safe and sound. The walk to the kitchen is a quick one. Shockingly, there isn't any talking between us. Matias seems excited for food. Thankfully, though, the walk isn't at all tense. Oh, there you are, Tino. Er the second we make it to the kitchen, however, Tino notices us. Or rather, he notices me. <laughs> Venti chai latte! You should be resting! Of course. How could I have not seen this coming? Tino, I... I'm cut off by none other than Matthias, who actually sticks up for me. Jeez, Finn, relax. Venti Chai Latte is doing just fine. Look at them. Tino looks between me and Matthias for a few moments, then takes a deep breath. As he exhales, I can see him relax physically. Then he moves over to the kitchen table and pulls out a chair, gesturing over to it. If you say so, please have a seat. Breakfast will be ready soon. I haven't seen Sweden at all in this game. Hmm, wonder if he'll appear in a later update. Oh, there he is. <laughs> right when I was saying that, there he is. And Lucas doesn't want to join because he's salty. With a nod and a sigh of relief, I take a seat. Waving good morning to Mio, who sat at the table on his phone. Another man is standing at the kitchen counter with his back turned making himself a mug of coffee. I see you're all dressed for the winter season. He glances at me once, but breaks his gaze to look at Matthias instead, who approaches him and grabs a pair of tongs from a container at his side. Matthias pokes at the stove, drawing up something that smells amazing. He approaches the kitchen table a few minutes later, precariously balancing six plates of eggs and bacon, three on each arm, with great care, he sits the plates down on the table. Breakfast is served! I accept the plate that Tino slides towards me with a smile. Matias sits himself down next to me with his own plate and passes me a fork and knife. Then he looks around, grin fading just a little. Hey, should I go get Lucas? I'm sure he's hungry too. I'll go. He stands up and leaves the kitchen, presumably to Lucas's room. Or wherever he is. Well, I just... Saw where he was. We just stared uncomfortably before I slammed the door in my face. Berwald and Emil tuck into their food quietly, but I don't touch it. What if Lucas yells at me again? What if he kicks me out of the house? I have no idea where I am. 
and I feel like hot dog shit. And there's no way I can make it home right now. <laughs> He's in the center. Lucas be like, I'm still mad at you. My fretting gives way to fear. And I see Tino return with Lucas. She's stony faced, mouth set in a hard line and stormy eyes grim. I sense up. Morning, Lucas. Lucas acknowledges him for with a curt nod and sits down at the seat farthest away from me. Matthias slides him a plate of food, which he accepts wordlessly. We in silence for a few minutes before Tino decides to speak up. So I know it's been an eventful few hours. That's one way to put it. Shush, I was thinking. Since venti chai latte is kind of stuck with us now, whether we like it or not, maybe we could get to know each other a little more. So wait, is the spell that I cast literally binding me to these five dudes? <laughs> Tino stares pointedly at Lucas after saying this, and he finally speaks up. You want to get to know the person who turned our lives upside down? Listen, we can't get Venti Chai Latte home right now. They're in no condition to go. So there's no use just holding a grudge against them the entire time they're here. We're all going to be better off getting along with them instead of, instead of doing whatever you've been doing. Like I said, I don't know what they did, but I do know that they don't deserve the kind of treatment they've been getting from you. You're really cool. Oh my god, this music is playing again. This is just gonna be the Lucas is pissed off theme. You're really going to treat them like an esteemed guest after what they did. Like they're going to go snoop around the house and they're gonna find another demon book and summon another <laughs> evil spirit. I can't say anything. I don't even know what I did. Okay, maybe I should have messed with the book he returned, but there was no way I could have known it would do all this. Matthias comes to my defense again. Give them a break, won't you? It's obvious they have no idea what the hell's going on. It isn't fair to blame them for something they don't know about. You're going to stick up for them too. Do you have any idea of how much damage they've done? We could all die because of the brilliant decisions they made the other day. You know, don't jump to be their knight so soon. Oh, <laughs> oh they're going. They're scrapping. Matias stands up, grabs Lucas's arm, and tugs him out of the kitchen. Bervold lets out an almost inaudible sigh. Two are whispering furiously outside, in a language I don't understand. Like Danish and Norwegian? I stare down at my food, twisting at the hem of my shirt. Why on earth does Lucas hate me so much? Because I asked him one too many questions about the books he wanted to get. <laughs> A few agonizing minutes later, Matthias returns. His face is pale. I glance at the kitchen doorway, but Lucas doesn't follow. He emerges a little later. Fists clench and white and white knuckled. In the silent, frigid fury I see in his eyes is enough to make me scoot my chair back a little. Um Hi <laughs> What did I do? The temperature in the room seems to have, Lucas glares at me, deadly calm. I beg your pardon. You keep talking about how I ruined your life and messed up a lot of things, but I don't have no idea what happened to make me show up here. If I'm really such a bother, then I should just leave. I should overstay my welcome. Absolutely not. We all stare at him. Tino smiles. Though it doesn't reach his eyes and addresses me. This is freaking cabin fever, man. Fenty chai latte. Why don't you tell us what you did before waking up here? Maybe we'll be able to figure out what happened since Lucas is intent on being cryptic. I don't know if you believe me, to be honest. Everyone's eyes turn to me now. Five gazes drilling into me. Visiting with my shirt, I take a deep breath and start. After Lucas returned that book on the demons, I decided to take it a look out of curiosity. I opened it up to a bookmark page and, uh, Started bumbling the spell unconsciously, and the symbol next to it started to glow and- Wait, unconsciously? So, the book compelled you to say the spell? I don't know. I stopped for a moment, looking around at the five. Lucas is still glowing, Matthias still pale, Tino Burwall and Emil's expressions are unreadable, I twist my shirt's hem, voice trembling slightly and continue. Uh, the thing came out of the book. 
knocked me back onto the floor and heated up the entire room in an inferno of sorts. And, and it started to talk to me in some language I couldn't understand. It didn't seem to understand me when I tried to apologize, either. Then something cracked, I didn't know what, and that's when I passed out. Everything is silent for a while. I turn to Lucas. I promise you that's everything that happened. I didn't leave anything out or hide anything. So now that you know why I'm here, can't you tell me what I did that was so terrible? Did the demon possess MC and then they wrecked some shit? Lucas sighs, his irritated expression melting into exhaustion. I'd be lying if I said I fully knew. He stands up and leaves the kitchen again. And something tells me he won't be coming back this time. My every thought screams at me to go off after him. It's kind of my fault he left after all. And after a split second of contemplation, I decide, well, I decide to stop right here because, dang, this is sort of long, but also sort of interesting so far. Like, the opening was definitely a hook. I'd be interested in learning of how these guys came to live with each other and just why is Lucas so pissed at the main character. So, yeah, that was Spellbound and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!